Life for me when, before he started a treatment was very, very stressful. It was unbelievable. He used to wander. He would go through, um, he would go through cupboards. He would, uh, yeah. oh, it was just, and he would have temper tantrums. And uh, it was very, very, very difficult. It was very stressful. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's better now, right? Yes. Yeah, it's better. Yes. Yeah. yeah, much better, right? Much better. I, 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 I'm going to tear up now because it was so awful before. Yeah, the guess. Yeah. I can easily tell you what excited my interest initially in photobiomodulation. I was doing a lot of research in photodynamic therapy. So there you use light plus photosensitizing dyes to kill things. You want to kill cancer cells, you want to kill bacteria, you want to kill undesirable tissue. And when you do these experiments, you have to have a light alone control, okay? So it's usually red light, because that excites the photosensitizers. So you put red light alone, and you find that's doing exactly the opposite of photodynamic therapy, PDT. So it's not killing things, it's actually stimulating them. So once you do these control experiments a few times, you sort of can't ignore it. I mean, a lot of people in the PDT field assume that light alone does nothing, right? It's like negative control, but it actually does do something. And then once you see that, you can study it. So that's how I got into it. Once you see that shining low levels of red or near infrared light onto tissue has a positive effect, which is not what intuitively you would expect. You would expect it to have no effect, right? It's just light. Uh, once you see it does have a positive effect, then it, scientifically it becomes very intriguing to see what's going on. I'm a research professor of neurology at Boston University School of Medicine, and I'm located here at the Boston VA Medical Center, where I conduct research with light-emitting diodes applied to the head and into the nose to treat the brain to improve cognition and thinking in veterans who um, have suffered traumatic brain injury or have PTSD, or a special group of veterans who served in Kuwait in 1990-91, and they have developed what is known as Gulf War illness. I actually got into photobiomodulation work through my studies in acupuncture. Uh, I've worked with stroke patients who have language problems probably for 43 years now, and I, have no I had noticed that my stroke patients would have paralysis and it would be rather level in their recovery. And I had read papers and sort of learned about this in San Francisco, I used to live in California, that you could apply acupuncture to treat paralysis in stroke patients. And in 1984, uh, a doctor from Shanghai, China came to MIT here in uh, Boston area and gave a three-day class on laser acupuncture. Laser acupuncture, what could that be? Well, it meant shining a red light, a laser light, on the acupuncture points. No needles, just shining laser light on the acupuncture points. So in 1985, I went to Shanghai, China. Uh, I studied for two months at the Huashan EUN, the Shanghai number one uh, medical college. And I learned how to do laser acupuncture. It's very simple. You just put the red beam laser light. It's painless. You don't burn the skin. It's non-invasive, painless completely. And you just put on the acupuncture points and you eventually, um, after oh, maybe four weeks, you see change in their paralysis, and it's very helpful. It helps about 66% of stroke patients. I brought that information back to the Boston VA Medical Center here and started treating stroke patients with paralysis. I did learn about light-emitting diodes applied to the head. I learned about that from Anita Saltmarsh in Toronto, Canada, and I also learned a lot about it from Michael R. Hamlin, PhD cell biologist at Mass General Hospital. What is the treatment protocol with the light-emitting diodes for a traumatic brain injury patient or PTSD patient? 
is going to be very different from that for a stroke patient who had a stroke just on one side of the head and it's, uh, if it's on the left it's going to cause language problems. So you really just want to put those LEDs where the brain damage is. Now with traumatic brain injury, that is often caused by accelerated twisting. The head goes forward and is twisted. So you get damage on both sides of the brain. So that's fine to treat both sides of the brain with traumatic brain injury, or, and then often those are the patients who have PTSD also. So those, that's why you would want to treat both sides of the head with those patients, and we get very good results. When we treat traumatic brain injury, we apply the light emitting diode cluster heads and we place them all over the head. We do six at a time, about 10 minutes per placement and there's two sets of placements in order to cover the whole head. And we treat every 48 hours during the week, so outpatient treatments, they come in, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we do that for six weeks and then we test. This is the V-Lite Neuro. It is a next-generation wearable headset designed for an upcoming field of science known as brain photobiomodulation. Brain photobiomodulation holds great potential for improving mental acuity. Photobiomodulation is the process of energizing mitochondria with low-level photons of certain wavelengths. Brain photobiomodulation is the process of energizing the mitochondria within neurons. This is the Neuro's transcranial headset. The clusters were designed to target the brain's default mode network. In neuroscience, the default mode network is a network of interacting brain regions known to have the highest amount of activity correlated with each other and distinct from other networks in the brain. This is the neuro's intranasal applicator. The high-impact polycarbonate lens has a built-in divergence of 57 degrees to focus the pulsed infrared beam towards the underside of the brain. It pulses at a rate of 10 Hz. This coincides with the alpha waves oscillations of 8 to 10 Hz and improves the penetrative ability of the photons. This is a photobiomodulation helmet currently used in Boston University School of Medicine for testing on veterans with Gulf War illness. It is powered by being connected to an electrical outlet. This is where we come in as an engineering company. We have downsized lab technology into something wearable, safe, and usable at home. Most importantly, our patented intranasal technology holds the key to whole brain photobiomodulation.